Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Here's a fun little uh, two-stamp scene that I just did. It's the cabin with shore and the pine row. The pine row was used uh, around the perimeter of this composition right here. This is a quarter page uh, card. So, uh, pretty simple in terms of the format, but I don't think it's missing for anything in terms of uh, the layout of the, uh, the imagery. This has just been stamped out one, two, three, four, five, six times. You know, sometimes I'm just using a little bit of it, but just kind of putting this around on the perimeter. I didn't want to spend too much time on the composition itself because uh, what I really wanted to do was apply this little bit of smoke, you know, this um, kind of effect coming out of that little chimney on this cab, and I thought that would be really cool when I was designing this stamp, you know, to have something, you know, coming out like that. It would have to be a nighttime scene, I think, for that, you know, that white to show up, so I wanted to do everything dark. This is just using um, a series of uh, blue values to apply in there. And one of the things that's really fun, if you might have seen, or that you might have seen in a previous video, too, is um, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof. White, opaque, white watercolor paint, just splatter painted right over the top of the scene after all the inks have been applied, uh, just with a uh, old toothbrush. And, uh, I don't know, just using a little bit of gel pens in here to uh, kind of reclaim some of the uh, areas that I toned out my my windows uh, with, you know, using the, uh, the blue inks that were applied in there makes for a nice effective um, kind of illusion of light coming out of the, uh, the cabin there, so. I don't know, just a real simple composition, but um, I think it looks fairly complex in, just in terms of the, uh, the different textures that we've achieved in here. And, uh, I don't know, the use of that little um, paper mask like this, you know, to apply that little bit of mist up there using um, some Colorbox white pigment ink. All right, anyways, if you choose to watch the scene, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, thanks as always for tuning into the channel. Okay, let's see what we can do with the uh, Cabin with Shore stamp here, and this idea of uh, kind of a freeform kind of smoke coming out of the chimney at night type of scene. It's one of the ways that I envision this um, stamp being used when I uh, drew it and designed it. Um, it could be used for any time of day, but um, I thought it would be kind of cool to have um, um, some smoke coming out of the, the chimney. Maybe with some moonlight kind of uh, shining on it. Um, from one direction or another. I guess one direction, you wouldn't have two moons, but um, you can have multiple sources of light in, in a scene if you want to. It's more like stage lighting, as I always say, rather than kind of natural lighting. Although you kind of want it to reference nature, of course, but um, I don't know. You can do whatever you really want to, to emphasize whatever thing you want uh, your viewer to be uh, kind of focused in on. All right, so I'm thinking about some background trees in there. And then I, I need something dark for that um, steam to uh, play against. So, in other words, if you want some kind of white, you know, kind of smoke coming out of that uh, um, chimney or steam, um, then we have to have kind of a darker background. We can do it with tone, but you can do it with tone and imagery just to kind of fill in the scene. Now, I'm thinking about this. Um, just some pines in the background there. Um, I think I have, I think I have some uh, versifying on it. So let me clean this off a little bit here. My table is an absolute mess. I've been doing so much experimentation with designs and playing around with the. Uh, different inks and different ways, pigment ink. So I have a lot of pigment ink all over this one. So let me just clean that off a bit. Should have done that before, but 
I don't know. I don't necessarily know exactly what I'm going to be using when I go into these uh, videos. Just kind of uh, do it on the fly. Um, all right, so I've inked that up from top to bottom, just in black. And I'm thinking about wiping off some of the ink off the bottom so that maybe we'll have a little bit of mist or something like that you know on the uh, the forest floor we'll see um, I don't have any firm plans yet I just want smoke coming out of that um, stack there okay I'm going to mask off the cabin with just a ripped paper little piece of paper towel okay I don't need it exact I mean you certainly could um, mask it out much more precisely with a with a sponge, uh, not sponge, um, a uh, post-it note or something of that sort. But um, I, I really don't bother most of the time um, with something like that. If something good, like that tree, went into that cabin a little bit, but I, I really don't care because I'm going to be bringing in a lot of different imagery into the scene and um, careful masking the way that I use these stamps or I don't know I guess stamping in general I just uh, I don't find the need for it most of the time there's occasionally there'll be a stamp that's more of an outline like in my private collection from other companies and so on and so forth that you know I might I might um, cut a mask for or something like that but it's it's really quite um, rare that I do that okay I just took off some more ink off the bottom of this one and went for my second impression to have some more kind of lighter versions of trees in the background so we have something like this being established right now um, let's keep it real simple let's do, go for kind of a, a two stamp composition here okay so let's put some more of these trees here in the foreground somewhere like right how about right around here I'll have it coming from off the page into the page go with something like this <clears throat> and how about another one on this side just to kind of even out the, uh, the balance so we'll say by putting some trees over here you're saying that the shoreline kind of comes around over here maybe there's a little bit of a cove like something like that and uh, I don't know that makes for a pretty complete composition maybe I'll go for a little bit more something like that down there so as I always say rubber stamping is really a uh, scenic rubber stamps are a really fantastic um, application for um, rubber stamping as a as a medium in terms of the repetition of imagery things like trees out in nature you can certainly replicate them over and over and over and it won't look odd to have you know several impressions of the same stamp you know, because you would see, you know, that type of patterning of nature, you know, you don't have to have like, uh, you know, five different images of five different um, trees, you know, uh, in a given scene. Certainly if you want to play around the scale, you can have a larger version in the foreground, and that would kind of push the depth of the uh, scene a little bit more. So anyways, we have our foundation here. Let's make this um, kind of a cool... Um, nighttime scene all right so if I want to put this um, give this a uh, kind of a more wintry looking setting then I typically work in um, cool tones mainly blues and I find that that's a, a really simple vehicle color vehicle to get this um, scene to uh, or any scene to look a certain way. So, when I'm thinking about blues, I'm thinking about a range of uh, values of a given hue. And I always start off with the lightest one when working in this technique, okay? Now there's other techniques. You can see that I've been playing around with a lot of dark matte papers, you know, and that's a completely different technique. But when I'm doing kind of like a glazing style of a color application, um, the technique usually um, comes together I think a little bit easier 
if you start off with lighter tones. I can kind of control my lights and shadows that way. Um, this memento is a little bit dry, so I think I'm going to use a little bit of reinker. If you have a reinker for your memento summer sky or whatever light blue you're working in in the dye based inks, go ahead and use that one. Or if you have just a light blue patch, go ahead and use that. I always say that um, if you're thinking about putting together um, kind of a range of tones for this type of technique right here, I know um, pads are really cool. I, I love having all kinds of different pads, but something like this color right here, I mean, I would almost never, well, I wouldn't say never, but I hardly ever stamp out an image in a value this light, okay? So it wouldn't be bad just to go with the reinker, you know? because a re bottle holds a lot more ink than just a pad. Um, and my lightest colors are the ones that I often use as a base coat. And uh, the base coats often get the most amount of um, use because I apply a lot of that color down on my cards when I do it this way. Okay, so uh, this is a very light value of blue. And what I'm doing is I'm establishing lights and darks. Okay, now, I know that's kind of a strange concept, you know, when you look at a scene like this, okay? It's, well, okay, well, where do you add lights and darks? Oh, there's no, def you know, exact area that's going to be the answer. There's just options for you, okay? Now, here's what I'm thinking about, just in terms of uh, an idea. This scene is going to be fairly dark, okay? Maybe the moonlight is somewhere out here, okay? And I'm going to have the moon you know, some moonlight down here on, you know, some reflective snow. But just in general, here's this cabin right here, here's these trees. A lot of times I like to put, you know, kind of a darker application of ink at the base of my objects, okay? So that's a good area to start off with, especially with your lightest tone. Okay, now I, I have some of that, you know, blue everywhere else too, but let's just go around and uh, add some shading just at the base of some objects, okay? Now this is a cabin right here, but usually at nighttime, you know, under the moonlight, you don't see like all the colors of the rainbow, okay? So I'm just going to go with a kind of a blue tinge, okay? Now here's the thing. It really doesn't matter exactly where you leave some lights, but just oscillate it a little bit. I'll leave some lights right in here, I mean, I could have left some down here in the water, I could have left it back here, even though I want a little bit of tone at the base of my trees, okay? You know, for that um, kind of a visual weight, it kind of anchors your objects down. Okay, I'll put some of this in my sky here. A lot of times I leave a little bit of area of light, like, you know, some lighting coming from behind the trees, but um, I want some of that smoke to be coming out of there, so I'll, I'll kind of darken that in. All right, now one thing I didn't do just now, I forgot I, I put some tone over those windows. I was going to leave those windows um, blank so I can put um, like a little yellow light in there for you know, like someone's inside, you know, a nice warm cabin. So I'll just go back in there with a, a gel pen and uh, take care of that that way. Okay, but see, I've kind of left some areas. I, a lot of times I'll leave a little bit of tone, you know, or light on top of my rooftop where it's capturing the light. But there's no set thing that you have to uh, do, you know, in terms of um, your creation of a lighting scheme. A lighting scheme just simply means to retain some lights and uh, don't tone everything off out in a monotone way, you know, so if blue's right in here, don't just see this as like one area to color in completely uniformly. Leave a little bit of it light and it'll really go a long way towards kind of describing this um, lighting scheme that you have, um, that you're established, establishing within a given scene. Okay, so adding this down like so. That's pretty good. I mean, I didn't really use that summer sky used a lot of that. Um, that one happened to be um, a discontinued uh, re-inker Ocean Aqua, but if this were in out, I would just get the summer sky. You know, any kind of light blue. Okay, here's a Bahama blue. 
we're kind of moving into more of the kind of medium, light medium tones of uh, values of blue. And I'll kind of oscillate this again. Uh, now think about some terms of um, some flat surfaces, you know, flat surfaces would typically capture the light, reflect a lot more of the light than the, like the side of this. So you can see this pad right here. Well, I have like, lighting coming from all angles on this, um, my desk here, but like right here, you can kind of see this is darker on the side and lighter on the top. Let's do the same thing for this cabin, okay? So I'll kind of make some, um, this cabin a little bit darker on the vertical planes and kind of, well, that's a little bit slanted there, but uh, on the horizontal ones where it would be capturing some of that moonlight, maybe I'll make it a little bit, uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave it a little bit lighter, or a lot lighter, we'll see. Okay, so you can kind of see that, see that cabin right there, it's, now it's kind of, just kind of darker on the uh, sides and lighter on the top, so it looks more like a volume. A lot of people color this in uniformly, say so here's a cabin, Here's brown or something like that over the whole thing, but think about it. Just don't, you know, just don't color as much. You know, um, leave some areas of your objects a little bit lighter, and that oscillates your um, values, and it, you know, can potentially make um, your scene that much uh, richer by having variation in this ter in this uh, in terms of lighting. It's the var uh, variation of. Uh, values light and dark, okay? Okay, I'm putting a little bit of tone along the uh, the, uh, the shoreline there. There's tone within the design itself, you know, that outline right there. You can see some shadows drawn into the, uh, the design, so I'm just kind of reiterating that a little bit more, okay? my water I'll leave some of this lighter and color it in some of it will be a little bit darker in other words or the same words just don't do everything within a given space or object you know, kind of uniformly. Leave a little bit of light or define. Now let's say I tone that all out, you know, with this medium blue. I can still just do the same thing with my darker tones, okay? So don't worry if you toned everything out, you know, using your first couple colors. It's like, oh my god, I didn't retain any light. Just don't go, you know, when you move into your next tone. Um, darker tone just retain some of those medium tones. Don't make everything the darker tone, okay? So everything's kind of relative. How do you make this lighter? Well, you can't really make this lighter, but you can make it look lighter by adding darker tones right next to it. And then what is this? It's lighter, you know? It's not removing any of ink, but you're just uh, kind of putting things in perspective in terms of, uh, you know, playing with um, contrasts. I think I might want to go a little bit um, darker, you know, than, than what I'm seeing here. Let's see, let's darken in that sky a little bit more because I want that kind of smoke to stand out up there and it's going to be applied very uh, lightly. I was going to say delicately, but that's not really the word. Just in a very light touch. So, there's not going to be a lot of uh, white pigment ink up there, so I need to make it a little bit um, um, darker up there, just so it shows up. Okay, eh, see that might be a little bit too stark white for me. So I tell you what, let's go back to a lighter tone. Now I'm just kind of tapping that off a little bit and just come in here like this and add a little of this down. So say there's some moonlight in here. Maybe it's not so super bright moonlight, okay? So 
See, it kind of muted it a little bit, didn't it? Let's do the same thing for this rooftop up here. You'll see that this window is starting to stand out a little bit more because I'm making the area around them darker. Okay. Alright, that doesn't look like a very dark blue, does it? I am going to have to dip into my Marvy pads, okay? Sometimes a given company doesn't have the complete range of um, values that you might want out of a given hue, so don't be afraid to mix and match, you know? Pull out all your different blues that you have before you start, unless you have 20 of them or something like that, which I know some of you might. Um, and uh, just do a mix and match, you know? These ones are kind of more neutral blues. None of them are kind of your warmer blues, like a Caribbean blue or turquoise or, you know, that type of thing. Although you certainly could add that in there, but this one, I think I'm generally going to keep it, you know, primarily a cool blue. I, I might add a little bit of a something in there just to uh, change the temperature. Well, not change the temperature, but kind of tweak the temperature scale a little bit, but we'll see. And this is going with the Marvy, just, it's just called blue, and it's kind of more of a navy blue. It looks like that memento uh, Danube blue that I just used, but um, this one applies um, darker than that one. <clears throat> See, so when I put that kind of darker blue right next to that, that really makes that rooftop stand out and appear much lighter, doesn't it? Because again, we're just working with contrasts. Getting it right along that shoreline there. Kind of holding my applicator at a bit of an angle. Okay. Alright. It's kind of getting that um, kind of more of a an established mood, isn't it? I don't like how that ends abruptly, though. Let's go in with a lighter tone of blue. Let's try the uh, Marvy Light Blue. It's real similar to the Bahama Blue, but Marvy inks are a little bit brighter. And they're thinner, too, so they kind of penetrate your uh, paper a little bit um, easier, which isn't to say that they're better in terms of this technique, but they're a good thing to kind of be able to add into the uh, the mix if you want to go for some brighter tones. Brighter um, is the relative intensity of a color, not brighter. It doesn't mean lighter, it just means more intense, okay? There, those windows are really starting to pop out a little bit more. Just in terms of uh, the contrast around them. Coloring this cabin at this point in time is probably, you know, I'd be better served with an alcohol pen than this uh, stylus tool, but I'll use this until I get into an area that's a lot more um, detailed. Oh. I just hear the gardener here. Might have to start this because it might get loud with a weed whacker going off in the background. 
I don't want to stop. Yeah, oh boy. The paper is kind of moist too, so it's easier to manipulate this while I'm doing this. Rather than the stop, let everything dry and settle. And uh, But yeah, we'll do what we need to do. So it's really sitting in the scene now with that shadow at the base. Weed whacker. Okay. I will pause and let this set up for a little bit, but I'll be going in here with a little bit more uh, color. And in the meantime, I'll look for my uh, salvia blue, dark blue ink. Oh, I mean not salvia blue, Prussian blue. All right, let me see. It's not too loud yet. I hear that weed whacker coming. They do several uh, houses around here. Okay, let me see here. So that's really kind of darkening over there. It's really kind of starting to frame off the uh, image now. We'll go all the way to black as well. It'll look really good with the uh, imagery having stamp been, been stamped in black as well. So. All right, I hear that weed whacker going right outside my window. I will pause. But coming around, okay. Okay, finally I'm back. Now this um, piece has been allowed to set up or dry here for about Oh, I don't know, maybe a half hour. So when that happens, I mean, the feel of it becomes a little bit different, but you know, a lot of the, uh, the moisture in the, the pulp of the paper has kind of set up. So I'm just kind of um, applying this a little bit more delicately because I can feel the ink kind of, you know, the paper grabbing the, uh, the, uh, the brush or, you know, by, uh, sponge tip here on my stylus to a little bit um, firmer because of the lack of moisture so it's not gliding you know uh, on my paper as, as well at this point in time you can see you know some little kind of uh, shapes of the applicator I mean I could just go back very easily I can go back to the lighter colors the thicker um, types of inks and just put another coat right over the top of it, that would be no problem. But I feel that this is dark enough to where, you know, if I get a little texture down there, it's not really going to be a big deal. And it really doesn't bother me from an aesthetic, um, you know, perspective to have a little bit of texture um, on a given scene. Everything doesn't have to be like, you know, silky smooth. Am I going for that? No, I'm not really. I'm kind of going for these little streaky bits, but, you know, just in general, I don't want it to be, you know, too crazy. All right, this is a um, makeup, uh, you know, sponge, cosmetic sponge. I forgot what it was for. It was, I already forgot. It, I think it was a foundation brush or something like that. So this is roughly about the size of my thumb. Okay. I, I, I say that because these come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, I guess. Not a huge range. I, I don't think there's ten sizes or something like that, but um, some of them are very thin. Someone gave this to me at the uh, Carson show. And uh, this is really fantastic for my perimeters, you know, if I want a really nice... Um, feathery uh, touch, you know, perimeter around here. It's a really uh, nice tool for that. It's it's kind of applying, by the way, this is, let me see if I can show it to you. This is, you know, it's just a brush. I don't know, you can't really, yeah, there you go. You can see the bristles here. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what this fiber is made of. It's some kind of synthetic. I don't it's really, would almost be, 
positive it's not any kind of natural fiber. These are too inexpensive to, to be that way. But um, There's a nice feel to this. Uh, now, if I, like, using, I mean, you could use something like this over the entire scene. I just think it would take a lot longer to apply things like those base coats that, you know, get a lot of coverage with something like this. I, I guess you can kind of squeeze it out and drag it out like I do with the uh, sponge, but, um, you know, the sponge is, you know, designed to be absorbent, and then if you kind of squeeze it out, it, you know, releases all that ink. With something like this, it's not, you know, it's not the, uh, the characteristic of, you know, the sponge here, you know. Or of this uh, this brush. Okay, let's see. Now, see where this might work a little bit easier too is if I want to get, especially with this being kind of you know the paper being dry, I can just kind of tap in some tone and it'll apply in I don't know kind of with more of a pastel type of tonal application. You know, I'm not applying pastels, but it just has that softer kind of um, feel to it in terms of the application. Alright, so that's what we have there. That was the Prussian blue again, so let's go back to black now, okay? And this is where the scene will really start to come together even more, you know, in a very kind of expedited way. And it's because I have stamped out my images in black, so using that same um, hue or, I don't know, whatever, tone convention of black, that's when I feel everything really comes together. It's when you use the same color that you use to stamp out, you know, whatever your darkest um, things are. Um, that is the... If it's not the same hue and value, it'll be the you know the same, or if it's not the same value, I believe it's the it's the it's the. Uh, it, okay, I'm getting mixed up. I took too long off here. <laughs> if it's not the same hue, all right, it'll be the same value in terms of similarity. The darkest thing. Okay, so you can stamp at something in a dark green. By the time you get it to the dark green again, it'll kind of tie it together. Or if you get something a little bit darker than that, um, that's kind of the the element that will kind of tie everything together. Okay, so in other words, we have the darkest trees down here. The image was stamped out in black. Now I'm using this same black on my perimeter here, and I feel it's it's bringing kind of a, a uniform and common. I guess value to all of the different objects, okay? I don't have a lot of different objects in here, but there's a lot of different spaces, okay? So say the snow in here, you know, this bit of land here, shore, with the cabin, is receiving that same black that the cabin itself was stamped in, and we have this water area down here, and when it brings some of this black into that area and also into the trees. It's kind of tying everything together um, a lot more so than before, you know, without it. Now that doesn't mean that you always have to do that. This is going for this kind of particular look and style. Okay, you can have a much more lighter look with a lot of pastel colors and things like that where it never goes up all the way to black. Okay. Or maybe black, you know, doesn't play such a prominent role as in a nighttime scene like this one, but maybe you bring some of that black, but maybe in the shadows down here or something like that, but just a, a very light version of it, okay? And even that just little bit can kind of tie things together a little more so than um, not having it. Okay, I need it down here in the sh shadows where that blue was. See that right there? Just kind of, it anchors it down, I think. Okay, right around this pier. I really 
like adding a lot in my four corners to really uh, kind of frame off a given scene with a, you know, a strong vignette. Especially in a nighttime scene, okay? Okay. I'm considering a little bit of that Caribbean blue, a little bit of a warmer green. I mean blue, bluey kind of a blue-green. It's very subtle though, so it doesn't look like a you know, like a you know, a tropical, really warm night, but it just it brightens things up a little bit. Uh, uh, just in terms of kind of tweaking the um, the temperature range of the uh, the piece. Let, let's go ahead and try that here. I don't know if I'll put it in areas that are really obvious. I might use it in kind of a you know the darker regions, but I'll use it in the darker areas first, and then I'll bring some of it into my uh, lighter area, perhaps if I like what I see. All right, let's start on the the darker areas like this. Can you see that kind of glowing? It is it. I hope this is showing on camera here. It's very subtle because I'm adding it into a uh, very dark area. But it looks like that. This is pretty true to the uh, the color that I'm applying. You know, that indexing. Marvy really made their uh, their cases very nicely. And you wouldn't think it was so close, you know, this plastic case would match their uh, ink so closely, but it, they really uh, did a good job with that. Okay, I do like that color, so I'm just adding more and more of it. But again, I'm trying to retain my, my lights. I'm just trying to warm up some of it. You gotta go into an analogous color um, on the color wheel. Those are colors right next to each other on the color wheel. When you have those um, colors kind of, in this case, blended right on top of another, but if you even if you just go side by side with them, it creates what they call a color glow. You know, it looks like the colors are glowing a little bit. Okay. Well, I did end up using quite a bit of that. I think it looks pretty good. Any type of uh, kind of a warmer blue, you can do that. You know, just put it right over the top of your dark colors. All right. So I don't know. There's a nice light in here. Um, I feel at this point in time. That's kind of what I was going for. I wanted something really kind of um, welcoming and um, homey or whatnot. Okay, let's do, let's do a little bit of masking. Let's get a little bit of variation in here, okay? Using some color. Let's go for the Prussian blue. I have, it has to be something that'll show up in that kind of dark area right there. I just want to go for a little bit of you know, kind of a textural um, variation. Just for a little bit of variety. I don't necessarily want it to look like clouds down there, but you see how that just little bit of a change looks like in that area. Right now, I'll just kind of go and blend some of it in a little bit. 
And we have something like that. Right down here, see so those little subtle variations. I mean, you can do that wherever you want. Um, and it's fun to do. <laughs> and it's just really easy. What I do is I just kind of add it right around the base here, and I just kind of taper it up a little bit, like that. So a lot more around the base, and then I just kind of move into it like so. And that way you'll get that nice kind of transition happening. Down here. It's kind of more of a kind of adds a little bit of a dreamy, uh, dreamy type of a kind of feel to the uh, you know the setting. Yeah, see like that. It kind of gives it a little bit of dimension, huh? I don't know if it's a reflection or if you can kind of see something under the ice. I mean, who cares? <laughs> it's just, there's a little bit of change going on and I just feel it's texturally. It makes it more interesting. Let's put a little in the sky like that too. Put it down like that. We'll come up a little bit more like that. That. All right, now let's see what we can do here. Hmm. Okay. This is what I was thinking with um, this kind of uh, idea of some smoke kind of coming out of that. Um, chimney. It's very, very narrow. I, it, it's a really tiny thing, so let me get my exacto knife. And this is what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create um, kind of a very narrow um, um, I don't know how to explain it. A very narrow kind of passage or pathway, maybe, of smoke coming out. Okay, so let's see, let's, it's like a little S-curve right there, okay? With that little thing. I'm going to cut out that right there. Okay, just gonna go like that. I'm not going to do the whole um, trail that will end up that will end up coming out of that um, chimney, but. Um, I want this area that's the closest to that chimney to be kind of the most defined. My exacto blade's really dull. I need to change out the blade. Okay, so we have that right here. Let's kind of open that up a little bit like so. And I'll just rip it. I mean, kind of having it more of like a jagged area should be fine. Okay, so I'll put something like that. You don't have to do that little S curve, but it makes it a little bit lighter, maybe. That's in theory how it'll work, I don't know. Alright, I lost my uh lost my exacto plate cat. Here it is right here. used to go through so many blades when I was in uh, school. Okay, here we go. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get some... I guess that'll do. 
Okay. Pigment ink. <laughs> Let me zoom out here. You can kind of see what's going on. See, there's the smoke like that. Okay, now one of my stylus tools, yeah, I think this one right here had the uh, pigment ink on it. down it. I don't want it to be super um, defined and thick. I just I just want it that way in the uh, right next to the chimney. I'll, I, I, I kind of want it to kind of dissipate as it moves away, you know, as it as it kind of spreads out. Like something like that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's getting cold looking at this scene here or something. Okay, see how it kind of, it's a little more opaque right next to the chimney, and as it moves away, it's kind of dissipating. Now let's just kind of follow suit and kind of go with that same idea here. I'm just going very lightly. I'm just barely tapping here. Okay. I'm trying to vary that kind of that trail a little bit too, where it's a little bit. Um, thicker on one side, you know, or maybe on the bottom or something like that. So it goes something like that. It kind of becomes, I don't know, the uh, the subject of the piece, wouldn't you say? You know, that little smoke kind of coming out of there. I mean, it's, it's not like having a person or something like that that becomes like the instant focal point, but I don't know, I find my eye goes directly to that. Um, for whatever reason. Okay, so let's try some additional color box pigment ink here. And let's go for um, some additional fog or mist or whatever. So we'll go with that same type of uh, kind of that smoke convention, but then maybe this will just be a little bit of fog in the uh, in this given environment. Just very light taps with a very kind of dry um, kind of application of the uh, of the pigment ink. You don't want a ton of it on there. You don't want to have these blobs everywhere, so just light tapping. Maybe I can kind of define a little bit more of this smoke here too. Make it a little bit lighter. Okay. You can put some down at, right around the uh, shoreline as well. I don't put too much in the darker areas because where dark meets uh, where the words are just only a bunch of darkness. You wouldn't have a kind of reflected, um, you know, little molecules or moisture, you know, in the air. So I kind of apply a lot of this type of um, ink for this effect where light meets dark within a given scene. Okay, so we have something like that. Yeah. Hmm. Let's put a little bit of fog right behind that. Let's just do a simple mask of um, this paper like so. So, 
kind of puts a little bit of uh, fog and maybe makes that cabin stand down a little bit more in a given space. Kind of brings it forward a little bit. From a textural standpoint, this just brings in a little bit of element of um, softness into the scene. Okay. We really need something up in those windows, don't we? Let's do this. Let's take a yellow gel pen, okay? I think that'll work good. I mean, I could try... Let's try something first. Since I do have uh, some options here as far as um, some values of uh, yellow. I want a really dull yellow. Maybe try something like this. This is just a... Uh, this is a, it's not that chisel tip. This is a shuttle art art marker. It's their alcohol paste base pens. All right, I have a big set of these. So like this yellow here, it's brand new. I've never used it before, but it's very dull. And I'll use that one first in here. That window really got uh, kind of covered up with them. Um, blue let me let me try to do something with that first let, let me try to uh, just go over with this white gel pen let me see if i can zoom in here a little bit and just reclaim some of that white i do this all the time all right so that has just kind of reestablished some of that white in there it's much lighter isn't it I'm putting that in there first because if I do the yellow, it might look more green. Not that you can build it up and just try again, but let me try to do this first. All right, now there is a window underneath here. A little bit of it, okay. Oh, and there, you can see this window on the side of this house, um, on the side of this uh, room over here too, so I'll go and establish that. I mean, you, you don't have to do this on every window, I just assume that this is like a two-bedroom cabin, or, or one-bedroom cabin, it's not very big. So maybe it's just all one open space where, you know, you'd have that lighting coming out of there like that. And let's say this is an open kind of format, like an A-frame, without like an attic or something like that, so I'll put a light coming out from that window up there. Alright, so we have that. It's like a little, I don't know. Alright, I don't know if I can use this now. That gel is a little bit wet, but let's try a little bit. Let's add a little warmth. Okay, that work, works okay. Okay, so there's a little bit of warmth coming out of those windows. Alright. Let me do a little bit of a light down here. It's kind of making it look more green, but... We'll just say some of that light is kind of shining out of that window. All right, maybe I don't need this pen. I think that looks okay. That gives a just a touch of warmth coming out of that window. So anyways, I don't, you know, I didn't want something like this yellow or something like that. It's just, you know, it would be... Um, yeah, that would be just too bright here. So I just want wanted to go for a nice dull one, that's why it's nice to have kind of a nice range of values. That pen only costs like 50 cents, so you can get a lot of those uh, pens like that. 
uh, for that price and these uh, kind of really heavily discounted sets um, that are available to us these days. All right, let's try some other blue tones. Here's a blue gray. There's a darker blue gray. And what are we going to do with this? Well, it has some media and applicators just aren't really conducive for really tight detailed things. So pens are just better for that. You know, something with a nice, you know, narrow tip like this. And I'm just going in. There's some rocks down here, and I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to them. I can go, you know, with some tone underneath that pier there. If I want to, I can, you know, color in some of these slats, you know, just so it's not quite so uniform in value. Um, I can't go with a light blue and put it over a dark blue and have it look light, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just trying to Kind of establishing some of the uh, shadows underneath the eaves a little bit more, maybe. You know, you can get very specific with a much more specific, um, you know, formatted uh, applicator here with this small tip right here. All right, let's try a blue-gray. This one's a blue-gray number seven. This one's a blue-gray number three, so I guess the darker you go, the... Uh, you know, the higher the number. So you can get a nice range of values in whatever given hue you're working in. I'm kind of add in a little bit of uh, shadows to some of these rocks down here. And again, I'm just kind of reiterating some of the shadows in my cabin. Maybe I can clean up some of that gel pen work. <laughs> Color some of these boards a little bit darker or put a little line into some of these cracks. And between the boards. Okay, there's our nice smoke coming out of there. Hmm. Let's do something here. Let's get really bold. Where is my bleed proof light? Okay, so there's my blade. Oh, I found my missing uh, exacto blade. Like I said, my desk is a complete mess right now. Alright, I need my old toothbrush. I took it to a demonstration a couple back to back weekends at shows, but. Oh, here we go. That's it. And here's some bleed proof white, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't seal this up, and there's a bunch of mold in here, I guess. Wow, that is crazy. Look at that. I have never seen that. I don't know if it's because I didn't... this cap wasn't on real good, so... Well, let's see, let me just wipe some of it off. I'm just wiping it off like this. I have a feeling if I mix this up, <laughs> it'll mix up just fine and I won't be able to see any of that, but I don't know. That's really weird. Okay. There we go. Clean enough. There's still some in there, but... This Blade Proof White is a pretty fine um, substance, and if I just mix it up, I think we wouldn't be able to see that anyway. Yeah. Let's go ahead and mix this up. Even if this was completely dry, which it wasn't, 
it reconstitutes perfectly. You just add a little bit of water to it and it's ready to go. All right, the consistency one is something like, I don't know, kind of a thin syrup or something like that. Maybe a little, you know, even thinner than that, but uh, I don't know. There's not like a real narrow window of um, kind of the viscosity uh, of the paint that you want. All right. Okay, that was really weird with that uh, mold in there. Mildew. Have to be careful to uh, seal it off more. I don't know. It's weird. All right. So kind of just being careful not to uh, get too much on here. And if I do, I just kind of want to squeeze this back into the bottle here because I don't want a big drop on this at this point in time. <laughs> If it does, you can just let it dry and it kind of wipes right off, but still, I'd just rather not have to do that if I, if I don't have to. Alright, so let's add some um, kind of snow to this um, scene. Looking for a piece of scratch paper. Here we go. There's a piece of my scratch paper. Dark scratch so I can see what's going on. I can see if I can get, you know, if I'm getting the consistency I want. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so let's do that right here. I know spring is here. Some of you don't, you know, you don't want to see this, even though you, know, you might be having a long winter. But I just felt like doing it. I want to do it for that kind of smoke there. All right, I think that'll do. Just something kind of subtle like that. Well, it's not that subtle. It's <laughs> there are a, a lot of um, dots right there, but I don't know. See, well, maybe put a little bit more right here. And it'll go something like that. Okay. That's how your hands get when you do something like that. But no matter, that stuff washes right off. All right, I'm putting my cap on tight this time. I don't know. We'll see if that happens again. It's, like I said, it's really weird. Okay, let's see. Where did my white gel pen just go? Yeah, that was my Uniball Signo. Might have something clogging that right now. All right, here we go. Oh, this one's the one. All right, that one's fine. Okay, Uniball Signo white, 0.7 millimeter. And I'm just going to go in here and add a few um, little touches here, okay? I'll just add some highlights on some of these little mounds here. You know, like I added those shadows down here on those rocks. Well, you know, you can kind of go in here and add a little bit of a highlight to them, too. You have the highlight kind of on the top surfaces of things. So now those little rocks in there are a little bit more dimensional because you've added the shadow. And now the highlight on top of it. See? Or it could be just snow hanging around on the top of that. We have these, this rooftop here and a few little dots of... Uh, white up on top of that, or on this rooftop up here, maybe. This is like a first snow type of thing, so there's not like a lot of buildup. That's typically the time, you know, the thing that I do on my scenes. Just, I don't know, it's just a personal thing. It's not, you know, because I think it looks better or anything. But, um, my reason is just, just more texture, um, kind of a, with a first snow type of thing before everything just gets really soft and, uh, you know, kind of illuminated. You, know, you can still have the textures of the designs like this down here. But I've seen some really cool applications of some different types of media recently on the uh, Facebook uh, group, Stampscapes group, and uh, someone's doing this. I, I forgot what it was. I, I think they wrote it down. Um, 
in terms of the uh, medium they use, but like everything around here would be like this really dimensional, you know, snow. And I think that whatever medium they did use was raised. wood. There's a wood underneath this window and I'll kind of illuminate it a little bit with the uh, pen here. Like it's capturing some of that light. Yeah, it's a little bit too light. Let me knock it down a touch. on tops of some of these branches. I think some of that snow is collecting on a little pine bow or two. And maybe there's a little bit of a larger dot here and there. It could represent um, a star or just a larger snowball. Snowflake. Just for a little bit of variation in terms of the textures we can see. Is it something like that? So you have. Oh, let me see. We have some pine trees down here. I can put a few little highlights on tops of these. So let me see here. Yeah, we're still. This is still just two designs. It's a two design, uh, two stamp uh, composition, but it, it makes for a very full scene. I, I believe. I don't think it's lacking for anything. Potentially, you know. I mean, the more variation you can create, you know, using more stamps. But if you want to do a very kind of minimal one in terms of the usage of stamps. Do something like this. I think it's minimal in terms of um, the usage of stamps, but I don't find it's minimal in terms of uh, kind of the statement that you can uh, you know make from it. All right, so there you have it. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Kind of a nice warm cabin amongst. Uh, of a gentle snowfall. You can see these little details down here. Doesn't it look a little bit deeper having that variation in here? Um, that paper towel, kind of rip paper towel. We've done it over here too. But just those subtle little differences are kind of nice. They don't have to be in there, but just having them in there I think kind of adds to the, uh, the overall um, depth of the scene, I guess. Have that little kind of billowing area like that with my kind of feeble, you know, little cutout area like that. Like that down there. But it kind of sets the mood uh, for the scene, I think. And, uh, I don't know, it's just like creating a little bit of a mask. Easy to do. And fun to apply. All right. Hope you enjoyed the scene. I want to thank you for tuning into the channel as always. And if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section below. <laughs>